hello, how's it going? So we all spend so much time trying to optimize our bash scripts or our code in general to save milliseconds when it runs. Why are we not doing the same with our actual shell usage? Because when it comes down to it, right, uh, we as in humans are the slowest part of the equation here. If we're, you know, retyping commands when we don't have to, right, that's going to take a lot longer than those couple milliseconds we save when optimizing scripts. So today I want to go over some shell uh, shortcuts, tips, tricks, just speed optimization tips in general, right? And this can help you out if you're completely new or if you're already experienced in the shell, you might learn something new, so stick around. Um, if you are completely new though, I do have a couple of bash tutorials to get you started, so I will link those in the description if you're just brand new to the shell and the command line. Anyways, so let's get started here. I'll go ahead and go into the directory I have made for this video. Um, and if I wanna just run a random command here, um, I'll just do ls-la. Um, so say I actually meant to run that as sudo, well, I can just do sudo and then double exclamation points. I don't need to retype the command or anything. I can just do sudo, double exclamation points. Now that'll run that as sudo. Uh, and if you're doing anything, you know, like Pac-Man and you're, you know, upgrading your packages and you forgot to put sudo in front, there you go. Um, and that double exclamation point there, that actually is just a stand in for the previous command. So I could also, you know, put something afterwards if I wanted to, if I really meant to run ls-lax, I just do double exclamation point x, that's going to put that x on the end. But of course, we kind of don't really need to do that since I could just up arrow and add on what, you know, whatever I wanted there. Um, and that actually brings me, since I just did control C there, that brings me to uh, the next thing I want to talk about, which is default bash key bindings. If you don't already know these now, of course, you can set your own custom key binds, um, especially since, well, I'm in ZSH right now, so I can set those in ZSHRC um, or, you know, depending on the, your terminal emulator, you can set key binds there. But just to go over some of the default bash key binds. So first of all, if I just do control C, that's going to bring me a new line without executing the command in it. You probably already knew that. Um, I can do control L to clear the screen. I could do, if I, if I just type another, you know, I'll just type ls dash la again there. I can do control A to get to the beginning of the line, control E to get to the end of the line. If I move the cursor around and I want to, you know, delete this word before it, I could do control W. I can also do control K to delete afterwards. Um, those are just some of the basic, you know, default bash shortcuts, but of course, you know, change your shortcuts to whatever works best for you because realistically at the end of the day, what saves you time is, you know, having shortcuts, having aliases, etc. Okay, so back to um, the exclamation point here, which is one of those universal useful bash characters. So if I just do exclamation point and then, you know, type any random string, so if I just did, I don't know, CD, that's gonna run the last command that starts with CD. So the last time I did CD was going into this directory. So it's not gonna find another directory called test in this directory, but I could just type any string here and it's going to find the last command in my history that matched that prefix CD. So it started with CD. Um, so that might save you some time there. Um, and then back to uh, actually rerunning previous commands with arguments. So. First of all, if I did um, ls-la on uh, my directory here, if I wanted to just immediately jump in and start editing those files, instead of having to retype my directory, I can just use my alias for nvim, which is b, um, and then I can just do exclamation point dollar sign, and that's going to rerun the argument um, on that command. So not actually the ls flags here. It's not going to run la with that. It's just going to run that argument, which was my dear. So now if I do that, that's going to bring me into nvim. Um, I don't actually need to edit any of those. So that is exclamation point dollar sign. That's just going to run um, the argument or not run, but uh, substitute in that argument from your last command. Um, and we can also actually reference arguments on the line we're currently on. So I have a very long directory here. So if I uh, want to copy, I have run media bread cow raid uh, test and then I have some files in this. So if I want to copy, first of all, I want to copy my file and then say I want to copy test2. Instead of having to type out that whole thing, I can just reference this first argument on the command line. Um, or not, well, yes, on the command line, but on the line I'm currently on. So if I just do exclamation point, hashtag, colon, and then one, that is going to reference 
um, that first argument, and now if I just press tab, since I'm on ZSH, that'll go ahead, give me my file there, and I can now just do test2. So instead of having to retype that whole directory, I just do four characters and press tab. Uh, and I want to copy those to the current directory. So I'll go ahead, copy those. So yeah, you can use arguments on the line you're currently on. You can pull arguments from the previous line. And actually, I will uh, show you that real quick. So if I wanted to make a new directory, um, and I will just, I don't know, call it, I'll, I'll actually do it in that same long directory there, and I'll type it out again to show I, I, this is really annoying to go type it out. And I want to call it, I don't know, my dear, right? I uh, really can't think of directory names here. Anyways, I want to make that directory um, but I actually, and now I want to, now I want to copy a file here. What files do I have? Okay. I want to copy file four into that directory. Um, oh shoot. I just did LS, which is going to ruin what I tried to do here. But anyways, we'll rerun that command. So that's the previous command. But now if I just do CP and then, uh, file four here, I can just do exclamation point, oops, exclamation point, colon, and then one, and that's going to, uh, run the last argument on the command that I previously ran. So this as the argument, we're going to copy this file there. Um, and now that file is copied, uh, and this exclamation point colon one, you can obviously substitute the one with whatever you want. So if I did zero, it would have been the mkdir command itself. Um, if I had more arguments on it than, you know, two, three, etc. So that's actually pretty useful. If you, uh, for example, have, you know, a long command and you swapped the arguments for some reason, like maybe you're trying to do an archive with like tar and you, you know, accidentally put the archive uh, name in the place of where the directory you were trying to archive was, whatever, you can actually just go, you know, you can do, you know, zero and then uh, say you, you messed it up, so put two there to put the, the, the second argument and then the first argument was actually supposed to be second. So that's where that can kind of come in handy if you have longer commands, right, that you're trying to not have to retype that like lengthy directory path or whatever it is. Okay, so that's arguments a bit. Um, there's also find and replace on a previous command. So I should have copied. Okay, yeah. This is actually, if you watched my previous video, this command is from that. But I have specifically replaced FCF here with fuzzy because, you know, maybe I didn't know that it was called FCF. And if I run this, of course, it's not going to work because fuzzy is not a command. It's FCF. So what I can do is I can just find and replace. So caret character to find the word fuzzy there and I can just replace that with FCF. Now that runs. Perfect. Um, even though that, that preview window is not actually running there, whatever, that's irrelevant. So the fuzzy FCF there uh, just replaced the word fuzzy with the word FCF. So there we go. Um, the next thing uh, I just want to go over in case you don't already know, you probably do, but CD, um, well, first of all, if I wanted to CD to the previous directory, I could just do dot dot. You probably know dot is current directory, double dot is previous directory, but CD dot dot. Um, and I could go into CD uh, test and um, my dear here. Uh, and now if I want to CD to home, I can just do CD uh, tilde there. But say this was, you know, once again, pretend it was a complicated directory path. I can do CD and then dash here, and that's going to take me back to that previous directory I was in. So now I don't actually have to retype test slash my dear. So that's really useful if, you know, I was in this complicated run media bread cow raid. I didn't want to type that out, right? So that is what CD dash is for. That's just going to send you back to that previous directory you were in. Um, and then, okay, two more things to go over in this video. Um, so first of all, if I wanted to make a new directory uh, with a bunch of subdirectories and I wanted to do that all in one command, I could just use braces. And I guess this is just called nesting. So if I do mkdir dash p, um, I don't know, I'll just call it my dear two. Um, and then I wanna put a bunch of other directories in that. So I could put, you know, dear one, dear two, dear three, and then I put the uh, ending curly braces. And now if I just press enter and I do LS, you'll see, uh, and oh, sorry, LS on my dear. I was like, where are these directories? Uh, so if I LS on my dear here, okay, now we've got all of those directories. So that is pretty helpful if you're just trying to create, you know, a bunch of directories at once. Um, you don't have to retype that command every time to do it. Okay. And then 
lastly, I just want to show you that you can run a command in a command. You might already know this if you're familiar with scripting, but if I wanted to, um, I don't know, echo uh, the date is, and then I want to actually run the date command in this. So I can just do dollar sign, open parentheses, date. Um, I, I don't, I don't even need any flags on that date. And then close the parentheses out, close the quote. And now we're going to run echo the date is, and then put the date in that. So you can run a command in a command directly on the command line. Um, that's a tongue twister. Anyways, hope you learned something new in this video. Um, obviously there are lots more, you know, random shell tips and tricks to go through. So I'm sure there will be a part two at some point. Uh, feel free to comment more tips and tricks. Maybe I will include those particularly in the part two. Um, but yeah, hope this saves you some time on the command line so you can make you as the human as fast as your scripts run. Um, anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Peace.